Hello everyone, welcome to an exciting edition of Coco Show Plays. I'm Ego Aaron. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the Joust clone from the guys over at the Rugby Circle Incorporated, known as Buzzard Bait. Buzzard Bait, a game that came out in 1983. Now, uh, what is Buzzer Bait? Well, if we actually go to the ad for Buzzer Bait, they've done a good job in summarizing what Buzzer Bait is. It says, we've done it again. You thought the king was great. What do you see this? Outstanding high resolution graphics, tremendous sound. Make this joust type game a must for your software collection. As you fly from cloud to cloud, you will enjoy sky high excitement. Dealing with the challenges presented to you by this newest release by Tom Mix Software. So yes, the boys at Tom Mix uh, have pushed out another clone of an arcade hit. And Buzzard Bait is that clone. Uh, this game was released on 32K machine language tape or disc. Uh, for your 30, If you've got 32K and up, you're golden. The tape always is a few bucks cheaper than the disc. In this case, tape $27.95. The disc $30.95. Trust me. Paid the three extra bucks, y'all. So, let's get the party started here. I think I've got the right joystick plugged into the right port. We're going to find out. You know how these things go. And if not, I can make a quick change around. And, of course, heck no. So, let's see if we can pause it real quick. And do a quick smooch around here. Now, in case you're wondering, I am playing tonight's game, as I always do, on my Epix 500XJ joystick. Here we go. Instantly killed. <laughs> so, what's the object of this game? Well, of course, this game, based on the uh, super tremendous Williams game, Joust, where you fly ostriches with mounted knights on them and joust one another. A concept that must be realized in reality one day. I'd love to see that. <laughs> Alas, it may never happen. Uh, I've always found this to be a pretty confident clone uh, in that they don't try to reinvent the wheel here. Uh, these are uh, pretty much levels set up just like Joust. Uh, the, uh, the levels disappear in the proper order. There are not, it's not 100% accurate, which I'll get into, but it's pretty good. The colors are pretty close. The sounds are okay. Uh, they're okay. Uh, the one thing you cannot really do on the Coco is emulate the or recreate the sound of a Williams machine. Williams, the renowned uh, pinball specialist uh, who had just a tremendous run of video games, uh, including Joust, uh, and, and including a game like Robotron. Uh, they had, shoot, they had a lot of really good games in, in a short amount of time, but they also had a unique sound library that they'd cultivated over years of pinball manufacturing. I mean, you gotta think Winball was, Win, Williams was the premier pinball maker for quite a while. And so, they really knew, they knew sound, uh, and they knew how to use it. And of course, they had a unique uh, graphics uh, uh, design including their patented joust kind of font which was pretty recognizable uh, I don't know what you would call it old English or whatever and you can see right there the uh, uh, the ostrich egg had sat too long and was, and was almost ready to uh, hatch a new knight but we took care of that of course there's the pterodactyl don't want to tangle with him there's a way to beat that fellow but I'll be darned if I know what it is now you'll notice that we've lost that bottom level and now there's a flaming uh, lava pit there. Uh, it was there before, but this time we've got actual little lava flames growing out of it. Now, these can be uh, super deadly uh, depending on uh, if you get too close. Like that. They will grab you and they will pull you down, which is exactly what happens in the arcade. Now, what's missing from this? Well, obviously the sound, the font, uh, the higher re the higher resolution and the uh, the colors you know that's all gone and really the play field it seems it feels a kind of snug 
uh, because of the size of everything, the resolution, but it still plays pretty well. Uh, but the, one of the main things missing uh, is the egg level, where you would just go around and try to try to get all the eggs. Uh, it's almost like, almost like a bonus level. Uh, that's not too bad. You've got simultaneous play, uh, which is nice. Uh, you've got the ledges. Whoa, I lied. Here is the egg wave. I'll take that back. I swear, I didn't think this thing had that, so it makes me happy. There it goes. I don't think it's in the same order. Whoops, back up, pal. I always thought this is a neat level. And there it goes. So that now you've, you've lost that middle ledge. In some ways, that's freeing in this. It gives you a little more room to operate. Okay, here we go. Oh, right out of the gate. That is a lot of knights right there. <laughs> not, not my best effort. That game is over. Well, they've got that. That got that identically the same. We're gonna play another game of this real quick uh, for fun. Let's talk about uh, the authors of this game: uh, Robert Lech uh, or Leek, depending on the pronunciation, and uh, Choi Dahlman. Uh, these were the two of the gentlemen that w that were at least partially comprising the rugby circle. Um, the rugby circle did some other stuff actually. Uh, when we when we had a look at this game uh, a while back, I was surprised at the amount of stuff that uh, they did. More a lot of these guys I've never heard of. You, you know, you don't hear much about them, uh, and you just assume that they're. <laughs> They didn't do that much. But these guys actually did a lot of stuff. Uh, and one of the things that's neat about the Rugby Circle is, among other things, uh, they were developers uh, on the Atari ST. And were actually like uh, They were actually uh, hired by Atari to actually do Joust on the Atari ST. So I always thought that was neat that a company that went uh, from uh, actually uh, making a Joust clone went on to actually make joust uh, for a little you know legit which is I always think I thought that was pretty cool now let's uh let's flip through this one more time here we're gonna go for it again we'll do one more go one player surely I'll do better this time um the uh, the the boys once they made they were when they were started working on joust and they had trouble they ended up making a uh an object editor for the for the uh, uh, for the ST, and it ended up being a very a very important, or at least a notable tool on the ST. And actually, was the tool that they made actually ended up selling before the actual game of Joust that they sold. Now, of course, you're talking uh, um, Atari ST production would be a pretty good chunk of change after Joust had been released, and one would wonder. Uh, if the f people buying an Atari ST would be would really be interested in going and buying Joust at that point, because if you think about it, by that point Joust had been out for quite a while, uh, and so I always wondered if it would know, really. It's, it's a, Atari had a habit of releasing their games for every system, regardless of what year it came out uh, or how long or how old it was. I mean, pole position and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, games like Pole Position and Joust and Dig Dug, and uh, they were out. They were out all the time. <laughs> they, they never stopped putting these things out. They were released them over and over. So I guess I shouldn't be terribly surprised that they had somebody working on uh, Joust. Um, you know, Joust actually was released in '82, so the turnaround on this was pretty good. I mean, all things considered, I remember getting games like this from Tom Mix and other and other outfits, and I was always. You know, when you when you were the Coco kid, you weren't necessarily uh, uh, thought of as the top dog when it comes to gaming. It always used to bother me. In fact, it still sort of bothers me. Maybe that's part of the reason why we started doing the show. But uh, you know, the, a lot of people sort of discounted what the, the color computer could do as a as a games machine, and I always thought they were wrong. I mean, if you compare J uh, Buzzer Bait, for example, with games of the era, uh, it, it played a fine game of Joust or, you know, some other games, Paperboy or whatever it was. Sometimes a far superior 
uh, games such as your, uh, you know, your the Sailor Man or the King, uh, and <laughs> so I always loved having my friends over and show them these games, uh, and I'd be very proud of. But I remember getting this game and playing with my buddies. But it, Joust is not a game that was difficult to run, so I don't remember showing this off with a ton of pride. You know, it was it's it's a good game. It, it does a good job, but I mean even the uh, even the Atari 2600 versions of this were, you know, were, were pretty passable. Whoops, I missed those. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Get out of here. Ah! That gummit. There's an awesome sound that the Williams machine makes when your guy teleports in. It's almost like an engine starting up. and It's a, it's a great noise. It's funny if you if you play the Williams pinball machines, you will hear the video game noises used ad nauseum. Stuff from like stuff from like Defender and Stargate and Robotron. You hear that stuff and you recognize it. I always think to myself, but there's another one. You know they <laughs> they always they always crank up the the sound effects. Of course, Williams had their pinball machines had a really good sound system in them. You know, I, we, me and the Brent owned several pinball machines. And, uh, oh, look at this. We're actually getting some luck here. Come here, punk. Uh, and so we, we actually have a... We have one or two Williams out there. A couple Bally. Looks like that poor guy's going in the drink. Let's put him out of his misery. <laughs> and there go the last two legends. So we've actually surpassed our first effort. Try this again here. These guys really come out fast. Now you're getting a little. I don't know if you noticed that, but there's a. There was some slowdown there. That and who could say who can be surprised by the amount of guys we got on the screen? I'm looking here, but about nine knights, counting myself. Just a just a boatload of knights on the screen, plus the eggs, plus all the other crap going on. It's a. It's an incredible amount of stuff moving around. And it's being handled pretty well. It was I could tell a little bit of a a drop. Nothing too awful bad. You really need to keep the high ground in this game, that's for sure. And like I said, like I didn't do there. You know, the other one, the arcade version of this also uh, will kind of cut you a break when it comes to putting you out there in a safe area or not putting you out right away. Oh yeah, no survival points, no kidding. Yeah. Now I read on Curtis's site. By the way, that's uh, uh, Curtis Curtis Boyle's the number one games website for the color computer, including where you can you can download the games. Uh, you can actually uh, uh, get all the facts there. Uh, shoot, that's lcurtisboyle.com. Now see, that's it did hold me off there for a minute, so I don't know if that was just luck. Uh, but anyway. I'll, Curtis has a, a mention on his site that two, there are two versions of this. One where the one where the oh it got me. One where the pterodactyl doesn't make a noise, and one where it does make a noise. Of course, I don't hear any noise this time around, so I guess I've got the version going that that does not have the uh, that does not make any noise. Oh, that's a pretty good run, though. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Fifty-five thousand. Not too bad. Well, I think we'll call it a night there, folks. That's a quick look at Buzzard Bait. Uh, again, this was a uh, Buzzard Bait was a game authored by Robert Letch and Tony Dahlman uh, of the Rugby Circle Incorporated, and this was uh, published by the fine folks over at Tom Mix, who just seem to be. They used to seem to publish these sorts of games. <laughs> this is just another in a long line of Tom Mix clones. Uh, thanks for joining us. If you're into Coco and would like to check out our uh, podcast, uh, the the uh, the Coco Show, which is can be found over on Anchor.fm or just look it up with any of your uh, your podcatchers. Just should come right up uh, the Coco Show. Uh, we also do uh, three other shows in the realm of classic computing. We've got the Amigos Everything Amiga podcast, uh, if that's your cup of tea. 
Uh, we also do a show dedicated to the ZX Spectrum called R. Sinclair, uh, myself and my partner, Boat. And then my brother, the Brent, and I do a sort of a off-the-wall show called ARG Presents, where we spin a wheel and randomly pick a game uh, or a system every week uh, with the help of the uh, live audience sometimes. Uh, we have a lot of fun. So any of these shows can be found over at Anchor, if you just look up Amigos Retro Gaming, uh, you can also use that same moniker on YouTube to check us out. Uh, we have uh, a Patreon set up if if you feel so uh, moved to throw in a couple bucks. We always appreciate it, and uh, there are additional benefits from uh, hooking up with us, including a, a very awesome Discord crowd that we that we love and cherish and bunk. <laughs> we love our Discord. Uh, among other things, yearly magnets and little prizes and whatnot. So, uh, but anyway, we appreciate you uh, checking us out. Uh, I will talk to you again next time. And until then, adios.